today we're talking about chemical peels. Um, you are going to see the process of a chemical peel, what to expect during a chemical peel, but let's start out with why chemical peel. So um, a lot of people think of chemical peels as shedding your skin for like 14 days, really difficult recovery, but a lot of people don't realize that you can actually have different depths of chemical peels and those depths really make a difference. The acids that you use make a difference and the depths make a difference. So in patients who just want a better glow to their skin, but don't want a lot of downtime, there are a lot of options for that. And then some patients need a little bit more aggressive treatment. So why would you need an aggressive chemical peel? So um, normally patients are coming in for concerns regarding hyperpigmentation. So your skin looks dull, it looks a little bit lifeless, and it probably has some dark spots to it. Chemical peels are a really good way to get rid of those dark spots and reveal glowing skin. So what does a chemical peel do? So chemical peels, what they do is they use acids to um, get rid of the upper layer of your epidermis so that you can generate new skin cells and push those new skin cells to the surface, which are new, bright, and look a lot fresher. So let's go through and talk about the process of chemical peels. So first things first, when we chemical peel, we need to decrease the skin. Basically by doing this, you put some sort of a toner, usually an alcohol-based toner, the one that we use is actually witch hazel based, onto the skin. And what it does is it gets rid of any excess oils and anything that would be on your skin from the day after we've already washed it and primed it. Um, so that the acids that we put on your skin soak in evenly. This is really important so that you don't get any sort of discrepancy in color of the skin when you do a chemical peel. You'll see that all of the layers of the chemical peel are really similar. So we just take a gauze pad, we degrease the skin, and then we take another gauze pad. So we wait a few minutes, um, especially with the chemical peel that we do, you need to wait between layers. Um, and then you take another gauze pad and you put on layer by layer. So in this video, you can see that my skin is starting to become pink. Um, pink is good, it means that we're having that reaction that we're looking for. What you don't want is any sort of frosting, which is when you see like a white coagulation on the skin, um, because that means that we've taken our end point too far. So a little bit of pink is good. When you leave the office after a chemical peel, you're gonna see in, in this photo that when you leave the office after a chemical peel, you're gonna look pink. Um, and then over time, the pinkness will subside and the peeling will start. So this is the photo directly after the chemical peel. You can see the pink in the skin. The skin is pretty red, um, but nothing unbearable. Um, when I left, it was pretty heated, so there was still quite a bit of heat in the skin, and there's heat during the chemical peel, so oftentimes we will give the fan or something like that to kind of allow you to give some cool air, um, and you want to be really careful about overheating after a chemical peel, so that's why we do them in the winter. This is the perfect time to be watching this video. Um, so you're going to leave a little red. The next photo you can see is actually my next day photo. My skin looked amazing the next day um, because it hadn't started peeling yet and it looked really good. The only thing after the next day is that you can see that it's starting to pull that pigment to the surface. So you can see a lot more of the discoloration it brought that out. Um, that's really common. The next photo we're gonna show you is actually day three. Day three is with our peel that we use, that we love, um, day three is when you start peeling the most. And in most, most patients, they peel in areas that they move the most. So their mouth is actually a really common area that peels first because we're constantly moving our mouth and like kind of cracking that skin. Um, the next photo is day five. So you can see by day five, really the big flakes had gone and I was left with peeling. Um, I did peel like that for an additional at least three days. The skin looked dry. Um, but was really nothing unbearable. With the big peeling, what you want to, what you can do is use a pair of really clean new, new cuticle scissors to trim, but you don't want to peel. So a lot of people see these videos on Instagram of people peeling off their skin after a chemical peel. That is a terrible idea. Please do not do that. Um, that can actually lead to more hyperpigmentation, which means that the dark spots that we're treating can actually get worse. 
It's the same reason why after chemical peels, you really want to avoid exercise or any sort of overheating. Um, and you want to avoid doing them in times of the year when it's really hot outside, especially here in Arizona. Summer is not a good time to chemical peel. So that is kind of the process of a chemical peel. They're really easy. You just have to plan a little downtime, right? And make sure that you're not gonna overheat at all. Wear sunscreen on your skin and then you can see results like these. So what you're noticing is that the discoloration is better. So my sunspots are better because having my skin tone, right? I'm gonna get some sunspots no matter how much sunscreen I put on. That's better and uh, the skin just looks much brighter and much more even complexion. So it's easier for me to go out without any makeup on because my skin looks amazing. Wanna see more content like this? Go ahead and hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button so you know what's coming up next and share this video with people that you love. That's our best way to get our content out there. Thanks for watching.